What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back out again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE stars who never had a WrestleMania match. Now this is uh, gonna be an interesting list because when you think about it, WrestleMania is always, for the most part, a wrestler's dream to be on the card and for a lot of wrestlers to even main event it. So it's kind of crazy that, you know, there are some wrestlers that wrestled their whole career and never made it onto the grandest show of uh, the grandest show of them all as people like the coins so we're going to check out some of these wrestlers that were not able to make it to a wrestlemania or you know even be featured on uh, on the card you know in any other past wrestlemanias appreciate all the love and support you guys are showing on the channel let's get right into this one should be an interesting list we are on the road to wrestlemania yes, we are mm -hmm. which means we are in store for lots of sign pointing and the collection WWE roster praying to the sports entertainment gods that they get a match at the granddaddy of them all. WrestleMania is of course a two-night affair nowadays and that, coupled with the ever-present battle royals and multi-team tag matches, means that most of the locker room should have a spot, if not this year then next. That hasn't always been the case, mind, and some notable WWE stars of the past, including champions and Hall of Famers, never got the chance to dance on the grandest stage. That's crazy, I'm Adam Pacisi from Cultaholic Wrestling, and these are 10 WWE stars who never had a WrestleMania match. Join us. But first, it is time to celebrate because Don't it's you. NordVPN's birthday! Shout out to them getting to their bag, man on that sweet mania payday. London didn't make the cut for the Cruiserweight Open at WrestleMania 20, despite the rest of the division. Starting off with a two-for-one deal with the tag team of Paul London and Brian Kendrick, who both managed to miss out on that sweet mania payday. Damn. London didn't make the cut for the Cruiserweight Open at WrestleMania 20, despite the rest of the division being in the match, before being relegated to the pre-show Battle Royal a year later while reigning as Cruiserweight Champ. His best chance of getting on the show of shows was alongside Kendrick in 2006, as the two were feuding with tag team champions yep. Eminem in the run-up to Mania 22. WWE neglected to book that match, which I'm sure would have been a blinder, though Mercury and Nitro were kindly thrown into the 18-man pre-show Battle Royal. Damn. Why Brian and Paul couldn't round that field out to a more traditional 20 is unknown, as is why they failed to make the bill the next year, even though they were in the midst of a record-setting tag title reign at the time. Damn. Kendrick eked into the ECW title number one contender Battle Royal on the WrestleMania 24 pre-show, which is as good as it got for him. I'm sure he thinks it's a conspiracy. Number nine, <laughs> Lanny Poffo. Macho Man Randy Savage is responsible for some of the greatest moments in WrestleMania history, from his historic showdown with Ricky Steamboat and his main event WWE title meeting with Hulk Hogan to his reunion with Miss Elizabeth mm -hmm. and his WWE title triumph over Ric Flair. His younger brother Lanny, the genius Poffo, on the other hand, has precisely zero WrestleMania matches to his Damn. name. Leaping Lanny may have been an undercard guy for most of his WWE run, but he did work for the company full-time between 1985 and 1992. Wow. Poffo got a so-called WrestleMania moment when Brutus the Barber Beefcake gave the genius a haircut after his victory over Mr. Perfect at WrestleMania 6. I mean, I get mine done for a fiver by some guy called Alan, but a trim in front of 67,000 is alright too, I guess. He may have wrestled hundreds of matches for Vince McMahon, but not a single one of Lanny's took Jeez. place on the grandest stage of them all. Looking back at the WrestleManias he was around for, it's hard to say exactly where he would have fit in, but there had to have been a battle royal or a multi-man tag match spot oh, for, for sure. him someplace. Number 8, Brian Pillman. Imagine you, you know, been with the company for so long, you don't have no matches to your to your name being at WrestleMania, like not even in a battle royal or nothing. Like, damn, that's kind of rough. <laughs> in truth, Brian Pillman only really had one shot at getting a match at WrestleMania. Signing with WWE in June of 1996, he missed WrestleMania 12 by a good couple of months. Toward the tail end of the year, the loose cannon embarked on a very memorable feud with former Hollywood Blondes tag partner Steve Austin. Mm -hmm. You know, the one with the home invasion and the gunfire yeah. and all that biz. Such a deeply personal rivalry seems tailor-made to be blown off at the biggest show of the year, and WWE may well have booked Pillman vs. Austin for WrestleMania 13 had Pillman been healthy at the time. Regrettably, the ex-horseman was damaged goods when he joined Vince McMahon's organization, having pulverized his ankle during a bad car accident a couple yeah. of months prior. 
It was so bad that doctors feared he would never walk again, wow. let alone wrestle, and Pillman wasn't up for stepping into the ring, even for a major grudge match with his friend come enemy. In fact, Pillman didn't return to the ring until six weeks after Mania, by which point it was abundantly clear that he was not the same dynamic performer he had once been. Damn, man. Number seven, Stevie. That's 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 an unfortunate thing of accidents, bro. Like, damn. Like, whew, that that just sucks. You just in a in a situation and you know an injury causes you to put you know miss WrestleMania and and have that moment and it it kind of you know messes up just your in ring ca career, bro. That that actually does suck. Be Richards. Stevie Richards is one of those former WWE stars who had a quietly great run with the company. Was he a main eventer or a world champion? No, but Big Stevie Cool managed to stay employed for nine years because he was reliable, worked hard, and could be utilized as a utility player as and when needed. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately for the former ECW Tag Team Champion, WWE didn't need him on the main card at any WrestleMania between 2000 and 2008. Well, at least not as a wrestler. Richards did get to walk that aisle as a manager, however, accompanying his right to censor brethren into battle at WrestleMania X7, right censor, as well as seconding <laughs> women's champion Victoria at 19. The closest Stevie himself got to having a WrestleMania match was in 2006 and 2008, when he competed in the pre-show Battle Royals. He didn't win either, in case yeah. you were wondering. Yeah. An often overlooked workhorse, Richards was never seriously pushed as a singles act, or in a tag team for that matter, so it's difficult to imagine a program that would result in a match for him at the big dance. Number 6. Spike yeah. Dudley a man of a couple of WrestleMania moments, but no match for himself, Spike Dudley yeah. seemingly never found himself in a meaningful storyline or feud whenever the showcase of the Immortals was on the horizon. He certainly played a part in the epic TLC2 at WrestleMania X. I mean, he would be there, but he wasn't actually in the match. Seven, interfering on behalf of the Dudley boys and taking out Christian with a Dudley dog through a table mm -hmm. before having his egg scrambled <laughs> by a chair wielding <laughs> Lita. A year later, Spike ran interference again, this time meddling in the hardcore title match between Maven and Goldust and pinning the tough enough winner for the belt. He duly lost it to the Hurricane in a backstage segment not long after. The runt of the Dudley Litter had no chance of making the card for the stacked WrestleMania 19 and was in mid-card limbo when Mania 20 rolled around. Mm -hmm. Had he been a member of the SmackDown roster at the time, he probably would have gotten into the Cruiserweight Open, but his big move to the blue brand happened weeks later. The then former Cruiserweight Champion was put in the pre-show Battle Royal at Mania 21 a few months before he was released. Damn. Number 5. Crime Time the tag team of wow. Crime Time, JTG and Shad Gaspar. You Gasp know what? That's crazy that they never really had a match at WrestleMania. That's crazy when you think about it. Damn. Rest in peace, uh, uh, Shad Gasper, man. Bard were both pushed and popular. But despite being an overact, they never won the WWE tag titles or had a match on the company's flagship pay per view. Debuting in the fall of 2006, Crime Time's first chance to get in on the act was at WrestleMania 23, but they were only used as lumberjacks for the pre-show tag match between the teams of Ric Flair and Carlito and Gregory Helms and Chavo Guerrero. They did pop up again later on the show for a bizarre skit involving an assortment of legends. After being released in September of 2007, Crime Time resurfaced the day after WrestleMania 24 and were directionless come Mania 25. Mm -hmm. Both members were involved in the pre-show Battle Royal at WrestleMania 26, where Shad actually eliminated JTG, foreshadowing their breakup on the following episode of SmackDown. Shad was released later in the year, while JTG got one more pre-show Battle Royal appearance at WrestleMania 27, after which he took to hiding from John Laurinaitis in catering. Yep. Gaspard, of course, posthumously got his WrestleMania recognition as a recipient of the Warrior Award. His heroic final acts were worth more than a thousand WrestleMania oh, for matches. Sure. Number oh, four. For sure. It's not even close. Ah oh, man, it, it that's it's it's a it's a sad thing. That that happened to him, but he he saved, he was saving his child's life, man. And that, they ain't, there's nothing else to, you know, that as a parent, you know, I, I haven't reached that stage in my life, but, you know, as a parent, that's the ultimate thing to make sure you save your child, protect them as much as you possibly can. And, you know, it sucked that that happened, but he was able to save his child.
and you know that's that's worth a million WrestleManias just in its on itself. So rest in peace, Shaq Gasper, bro. The Hurricane. Stand back. There's a WrestleMania virgin coming through. <laughs> Not a WrestleMania We've already virgin. mentioned him in this list, so you know he's at least been close to the main show, but Shane Hurricane Helms has never had a match on Mania itself. He certainly got some face time at WrestleMania 18, with the hardcore title shenanigans going on throughout the course of the show. The Caped Crusader was absent at 19, notwithstanding the fact he got a famous victory over The Rock on the way there. The Great One and the Green One crossed paths once more at WrestleMania 20, albeit only during The Rock's pre-match backstage promo. The Masked Man was thrown into the pre-show Battle Royal at Mania 21, missed out completely at 22, and then finally got a match at 23. On the pre-show, that is. Yep. But at least he got to share the ring with Ric Flair, right? Come to mention it, how mental is it that the freaking Nature Boy couldn't get on the main card in 2007, yet Kevin Thorne and the Great Carly could? Yeah. Number three, Lance Storm. If I could be serious for a minute, and let's be honest, I probably can't, it is a crying shame that Lance Storm never got an actual match at WrestleMania. The never Canadian technician joined WWE following the sale of WCW in early 2001, too early for a bout at the locked-in WrestleMania X7, but his upward trajectory suggested he may play a part in Toronto the following year. Mmm, not quite. Lance did wrestle on the nights, but only made the pre-show portion of proceedings, tagging with Test and Mr. Perfect against Rikishi, Albert and Scotty Too Hotty for a match broadcast on Heat. A year later for WrestleMania 19, Storm was bumped off the main card and put once again on Heat in order to make room for the Miller Lite Catfight Girls and a mini limp- <laughs> The Miller Lite Catfight <laughs> Yup, that was- Hey man, why, why are we going to put on a technical wrestler that can, you know, go in the ring? Let's get some women out there and have them have a cat fight in bra and bikinis. <laughs> Boy, has wrestling changed? <laughs> Bizkit concert. No, honestly. Lance, Chief Morley, aka Val Venus, Kane and Rob Van Dam must have been furious that their world tag team title bout was relegated, especially since it directly impacted their pay packet for the night. Storm didn't make the grade for WrestleMania 20 and actually had the last match of his full-time WWE run five days after the event. Number two, Jacqueline. Jacqueline Moore accomplished a hell of a lot during her trailblazing WWE career. Between 1998 and 2004, she won the women's title, the Cruiserweight title, and mm. competed on some historic pay-per-views in high-profile matches. She did not, however, get to ply her trade at WrestleMania. Which is very interesting. The first Mania that Jackie would have been eligible for was the messy WrestleMania 15, where the women's title was on the line in a match between Sable and Tori. Moore herself lost the title to Stephanie McMahon on the WrestleMania 16 Go Home edition of SmackDown. There would be no rematch at the show of shows, but there would be a catfight between Miss Kitty and Terry yeah, Runnels, just in case right. you were worried that the women's division wasn't fairly represented. Sounds Luckily right. for Jackie, she got herself a WrestleMania moment when she accompanied the APA and Taz for their six-man tag at WrestleMania X7, made doubly sweet since it took place in her mm -hmm. home state of Texas. She refereed the pre-show six-man before Mania 18, but that was it until she got her due as the first black female WWE Hall of Fame inductee 14 years later. Damn. Number one, Shane Douglas. He is predominantly remembered as being the franchise of ECW, but Shane Douglas also had a couple of runs in WWE. The dynamic dude's best chance of making the WrestleMania card was probably at Mania 7 in 1991. Douglas had been plugging away since the previous summer and was rising through the ranks steadily when he had his breakout performance in the 91 Royal Rumble. Lasting 26 minutes and 23 seconds, Shane didn't score any eliminations, but he was clearly being positioned as a promising young star and had recently gained momentum with televised victories over the likes of Haku. Considering there were 14 matches on the main card at Mania 7, he would have fancied his chances of being in one of Sheesh. them. However, Douglas left WWE just a week after the Rumble to care for his ailing father. Oh. The former ECW champion returned in the summer of 1995 as evil educator Dean Douglas, but any WrestleMania hopes he may have had were wow. quashed due to a mixture of injuries and politics, and he was out the door come January 1st, 96. Damn, Back man. to the drawing board, Dean. Well, the blackboard, anyway. Damn, man.
So he pretty much gave up potentially his WrestleMania opportunity to have a match there to take care of, you know, family, which, you know, all you can do is respect it. But this is the world we live in is sometimes, especially in wrestling, your window of opportunity is from here and here. And regardless of what the situation is, you may miss that window of opportunity, you know, even if it's a, for a legitimate reason, you know, you may miss it, may not be able to get it back again. So it's unfortunate that, uh, you know, a lot of these individuals, you know, maybe had some prominent roles on the show or, you know, won multiple titles, but didn't really have a match on the main show itself, man. So uh, a lot of this I didn't even know. Uh, but you know, this is one of those type of videos, uh, definitely just since we are in the WrestleMania season, I wanted to check out and, and kind of, you know, get some, uh, some tidbit information on situations like wrestlers, not <laughs> they're going their entire career, not being on the WrestleMania actual match card itself. And you would think they would have been so comment down below. Let me know which one of these, uh, wrestlers shocked you the most for not being on wrestlemania's uh card itself um and also i don't know if you guys have been seeing a little glitching on the screen i'm not sure what's going on i think it has something to do with my camera i've been noticing it uh i'm recording this on obs so if you have been seeing any glitching on the screen i'm sorry about that i'm gonna try to fix that for the next few videos it sometimes comes and goes obs be tripping i may need to update it not sure but uh, i'm sorry for that just wanted to put that out there because i've been noticing it myself because you know I, I have the screen set up on a, another monitor just to make sure everything looks good and sound good for you guys so uh if you guys have noticed it sorry about that but hey man i appreciate all the love and support you guys have shown on the channel road to 150k and i am still young this beauty youtube wrestling champ of the world and also in in a clutch i, I do this you know what I, I, this is like the second time i done messed up on my own damn outro i'm a two belt champion not I don't know, man. I'm out of it today. <laughs>